So you may have heard the news. Knowledge Musona has joined Riyadh SC. Let's throw it back to the beginning of May, when Lionel Messi had just been suspended by PSG for going on an unauthorized trip to Saudi Arabia. A couple days later, Messi on social media would then post a YouTuber apology video. On top of all of that, PSG would no longer be entertaining any kind of extension to Messi's expiring contract. Thus meaning once again, Lionel Messi was a free agent. Now unlike last time, when he only had PSG, there were many more options to choose from. Barcelona was obviously the clear favorite, as the club is Messi's true love. Messi joined Barcelona's La Masia Academy when he was just 13, and for the next 21 years would produce showings of pure magic to the world. It was only because of Barcelona's Barcelona's financial incompetence that Messi was forced to say goodbye sooner than he'd ever imagined. But right behind them was a party that was aggressively pursuing Lionel Messi. Saudi Arabia. Already there were rumors because of Messi's trip there, which was due in part to the fact that he's a tourism ambassador for the country. Not to mention, Al Nasser back in January signed Cristiano Ronaldo on a two and a half year deal estimated to be worth 200 million euros annually. So reigniting that Messi vs Ronaldo debate in Saudi Arabia would have done a lot of good for the country. But we can go even farther into this. Because recently, four of the largest clubs in the country were sold to Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Which, by the way, is a danger to this sport because when you start having having the literal state fund football clubs, it's only a recipe for monopolistic disaster. Also not to mention this just adds to the Saudi government's portfolio of, uh, you know, sports washing. And before the whataboutism Olympics starts, no dumbasses, I'm not Islamophobic, I'm simply state-owned assets phobic. Literally if any other country did this, I'd be talking about how it's bad for the sports. In fact, I am doing that with the China video essay. Back on topic though, because of the privatization of Saudi Arabia's four largest clubs, there has been a very aggressive pursuit for literally any star player in existence. Karim Benzema just moved to Al Ittihad from Real Madrid, and his contract is worth over 200 million euros a year. N'Golo Conte is close to joining the club as well, and his deal is worth 100 million per year. Saudi Arabian clubs have also been linked with the likes of Riyad Mahrez, Ilkay Gundogan, Wilfred Zaha, and even f***ing Alexis Sanchez. Should we have spent so heavily in the past? Probably not but we lived the dream. So now going back to the Lionel Messi transfer saga when it comes to Saudi Arabia, Saudi club Al Hilal reportedly offered Lionel Messi a two-year contract estimated to be valued at over 600 million. Then there was Inter Miami, or as I like to call them just to piss off my friend, Inter. Miami in general is just a very attractive city to live in, especially if you're a superstar athlete. The club itself is worth 600 million and one of the majority owners is David Beckham, so it just kind of made sense that if any MLS club was to sign Messi, it'd probably be Inter Miami. There is a downside though, and it's a pretty big one, especially the journalists who just question this move in general, and that's the fact that Inter Miami are currently the worst team in the league. So really, it just kind of comes down to whether or not Messi wants to be a part of that. Finally, one more destination... No, stop. F***ing stop! Throughout this transfer saga, it was pretty much a race between Barcelona and Saudi Arabia. You also had Inter Miami in the back, but usually most people just kind of disregarded it. But then came June 6th. At about 10 in the morning, Apple TV's Twitter posts something pretty cryptic hinting at Messi. Later in the afternoon, that tweet was revealed to be hinting at a Messi docu-series that was recently greenlit. Then came the next day, and in a matter of a few hours, the football world was about to have their entire landscape turned upside down. First thing in the morning, some reliable journalists started reporting that Lionel Messi wants to join Inter Miami. From there, the hype grows at exponential levels, especially in the States, but also there was some panic, specifically from the Saudi Arabian camp. Out of complete desperation after hearing the news, Al Hilal raised their offer to 1.5 billion euros and they were left on red. Then noon arrived, and it was all confirmed by the great Fabrizio Romano. The here we go had been tweeted, and it was now official. Messi is taking his talents to South Beach. Fight! And win! With Messi saying that he was going to enter Miami, we already saw a massive amount of influence from the GOAT. Before anything was official, Inter Miami's Instagram following was around 1 million. As of right now though, it's at 5.8 million. 
and still growing at exponential rates by the minute. And ticket prices have seen that same growth as well. Initially, Inter-Miami's lowest average tickets were around $20 to $30. But after the signing of Messi, it's at almost 500. But that doesn't really matter anymore because every Inter Miami game is now sold out. I mean, you could still buy resale, but you'd be looking at about 1,000 to even $10,000. You Ticketmaster. Also, there's been rumors about potentially Di Maria and Busquets joining Messi as well. Holy shit. It's actually gonna happen again. The question though is how exactly did Inter Miami even pull this off in the first place? I mean, they were up against Barcelona and Saudi Arabia who had just offered 1.5 billion. That's like a whole military budget. Well, one thing to mention first is the fact that it was never about the money for Messi. If it was, then he would have joined Saudi Arabia. But looking at the details of this contract, maybe we can get a better idea? According to The Athletic, Messi will receive a portion of the profits generated by new subscribers to MLS's season pass. This season pass is on Apple TV and allows access to anything MLS related to fans. Also, Adidas, if you didn't know, is a massive sponsor for MLS. They actually provide the kits for every team. And it's expected for Messi to earn a percentage of profits from Inter Miami shirt sales paid directly by Adidas. Messi will also receive some kind of clause that will allow him to potentially own an MLS club after retirement. Quite honestly though, I think maybe he should just be the owner of MLS once he retires because he'll do a lot more than Don Garber. But outside of that, there's not really many figures in terms of how much Messi's gonna be making. Of course, he's gonna be making a lot of money, we just don't really know. There was an estimate from the Miami Herald that said 125 million to 150 million, but it is the Miami Herald and no one else has mentioned those figures whatsoever. Also, there were rumors in the past about how every MLS club would pitch in, that way Inter Miami could actually afford Messi. Again, not really enough reliable sources for that, but I will say if it is true, it's not as bad as Saudi Arabia owning four different clubs, but it is still pretty slimy. Now, we already mentioned why Messi didn't choose Saudi Arabia. Why didn't he choose Barcelona though? That's his true love. Well, for me at least, I didn't really think Barcelona was that much of a candidate. I mean, yeah, of course, it's Barcelona, Messi, that would've been a fantastic reunion. But then you look at just how the club's been ran for the past few years, not like anything's gotten better, they keep selling things just so they can stay afloat, just so they can register players. But going to the reasons that were stated by Messi himself, it was mainly due to the fact that there's just trust issues between him and the club, and it makes total sense. I mean, we already mentioned this before, if you remember during the last time he was a free agent, he had to wait until pretty much the last minute to know whether or not he could be registered. And because of that, he only had one single destination where he could play football, and they could actually afford him. PSG. Now how'd that go? Not so great. And again, Barcelona were having those issues of registering their players. They've only just locked in contracts with the likes of Gavi and Sergio Roberto, but they would still need to free up a lot of space in order to be within La Liga's salary cap. And because that would take a pretty sizable amount of time, I mean, Messi was just not having that. He needed a quick and assuring answer, and he was definitely not going to receive that from Barcelona. Another thing was that he didn't want to feel responsible for anyone's departures, not just players, but staff, employees. Barcelona were already cutting costs for different departments like basketball, handball, hockey, and futsal, about 50 15% to be exact, and also employees have been suffering. Barcelona just shut down Barca TV. So had Messi joined Barcelona at some point in time, there had to be some kind of risk made, and that would probably be at the expense of people laid off, and he didn't want to be responsible for that. I mean, all this really shows is how shambolic this club has become. After the official announcement though, Barcelona did make a statement, and let me tell you, they were seething frothing at the mouth while writing this. In the second paragraph, it says, quote, President Laporta understood and respected Messi's decision to want to compete in a league with fewer demands further away from the spotlight and pressure he has been subject to in recent years. It just feels like one of those, like, incel reactions. <clears throat> Milady, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to report you as a criminal because you've stolen my heart with your beauty. Then at six, perhaps?
Well, that's so sweet of you. Thank you, but I'm sorry, but no. Well, f you, bitch. I didn't even like you. You're actually quite ugly, and I make ten figures an hour. So why should I even be worrying about women like you? Oh, I hope to God that every single man that you encounter for the rest of your life treats you like garbage, because you always take the nice guys like me for granted. All these women complaining about, oh, I'm always treated like garbage. Where, where are the nice guys? Where are the nice guys at? I'm right here. Anyways, back to Messi at Miami. This is gonna be like Pele and Beckham going to MLS. It's gonna be that same influence. I mean, this is a huge move for the MLS. I mean, football in the US in general. Do you understand how insane it feels to know that Messi will be in Charlotte, North Carolina on October 21st? People from all over the world who don't even follow MLS will now follow it. And I feel like that's just a great opportunity for MLS to capitalize. I mean, this is a growing league. This is almost perfect for them. Hopefully they don't bottle it because damn, their marketing team ain't so great. In the end, we just need to make sure this contributes to the longevity of this league, past the point that Messi decides to leave or retire. But it is a very exciting time in the States, you know? I mean, the sport is growing, the league is growing, everything's growing when it comes to this sports. And Messi coming to the States, I mean, that's only gonna skyrocket it. It's gonna be exciting to see, man. Will this get me further into MLS? I'll be honest, uh, probably not, but, but I'll, I'll definitely tune into some Inter Miami games. But what do you guys think about all this? Is it gonna be a real big benefit for MLS, or are we just gonna see this be somewhat of a bandage for all the problems that it has right now? I think there's definitely a conversation for both topics, so, you know, leave it down in the comments below. Of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Stan, Janos Balas, Chris Damaseno, Miliwe009, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suomez, Are San, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Guy, Joao Carvalho, Marco Fujimoto, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rivera Drawing, Rory Burns, Slider Kit, Sniffrix, Takaoka Fan, The Motor Drive, Tomkis, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Bubble, Chris Visconti, Q Snotty Champs 2022, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joao Paricio, Michael Nista, MX Weeb, Nish, Patrick Barley, Phil Bacchus, and Unbroken. Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you like, follow my TikTok, I'm trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course you can follow my active Twitch. Yeah, I'm trying to stream at least once every week, so definitely follow that. But until then, I'll see you guys.